From the EPAWA headquarters in South Allentown, Pennsylvania, this is Weather Weeklies, an informative video blog on the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may or may not reflect the thoughts of the EPAWA staff as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Hey, good Sunday morning to you. Another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 3rd. And we're going to get right into our long range like we do every week. And uh, we are in now in meteorological winter. And that, that started on the 1st of December. Uh, but we are slightly above average. And that's going to remain that way until we get to the middle of the week when we have a cold front coming through on Wednesday. That is, uh, that cold front is going to be a very strong one. It's going to uh, bring in the colder air that is uh, more typical of December and actually below average temperatures that's going to stick with us for several weeks. So I do think we are slightly below here on Wednesday, this is 6th here, uh, when that cold front comes through. After that, we're below average for the next couple of weeks, slightly below average uh, within a few days centered around Christmas, and then back to below average as we head into the first week of January. Now January is interesting. I don't think, I think it's going to start off cold, but I do think we moderate at some point and start going back into that zonal wavelength pattern again uh, that we dealt with uh, kind of like the second half of, uh, of uh of November, couldn't think of the month there. Uh, but anyway, uh, we are going to have the cold front come through here on on Wednesday. All right, showers out ahead of it. May end is a very brief period of snow, and I mean very brief, just a few snowflakes. This is not accumulating stuff. We're not, we're not thinking uh, maybe a quick dusting somewhere, but that's about it. But it's going to be uh, rain ending as a few snowflakes at the very, very tail end. Still have our winter signals here between the 11th and 18th. Now, we are going to have something before that. I'm going to discuss that in the video, too, that we have to watch. It will be for next Saturday. Models are starting to key in on a little kind of uh, little wave or clipper type event that we're going to be dealing with at that point. Uh, but our temperatures in December, below average. Still going with above average uh, uh, snowfall, and that's areas northwest 95 we're discussing there because that is climatologically the area that has the best chance for that to occur. And then January, we go to near to slightly above average, even though we start off the first week or 10 days or so uh, below average, we think. After that, we think we get in a little bit, uh, kind of like a January thaw thing where you moderate a little bit, and then you go kind of up and down after that. So we're going to finish near to slightly above average, I think, as a whole in January as far as temperatures after a cold December. And January, we'll still have near average snowfall for most of our coverage area. That includes, uh, that's not just areas northwest 985, that's pretty much everywhere. Now, we do look at the La Nina in the, in the eastern Pacific and the, pro and the progress of that each week. The change from the previous week is noted here. Uh, still de dealing with an east-based, east-based La Nina. You see our coldest regions are right here in Nino 3 and 1 and 2. Uh, and actually it increased uh, temperature, or, or excuse me, temperatures decreased in Nino 1 and 2, kind of keeping everything uh, uh, more east-based. But uh, now these, the, this is a, this data is, uh, comes out every, every Monday. Of course, I'm doing the video here on Sunday. So this is almost, this is six days old. This is almost a week old. And I did look at some more observations since then and actually have a graphic to show you on that. What we're talking about with a lot of in the Eastern Pacific. And it looks more like it's, it's getting more base and wide here. Less east base, which would be right in here. Okay, this is your east based areas. This was the area that was the coldest out of the whole, uh, whole La Nina area here. So you got Nina 1 and 2 here, 3, 3.4, and 4, okay? But it's looking like it's starting to move west a little bit. Now, this is not surprising because we've seen this in all of our analog years. We've start, seen uh, you know, they started off east-based in La Nina in November, and then we started with time. We started seeing a westward propagation of these coldest anomalies, and we're starting to see that uh, at times. I don't know if it's going to be sustained, how far west it gets. Is it going to become a west-based Nina? I don't think so, but, uh, you know, with centralized or uh, basin-wide is certainly plausible. And it's probably probable, I would think. But uh, we, do th we don't expect it to remain east base long. It's just a matter of when. Usually when that transition occurs is somewhere around, you know, maybe later in the month, this month or January. So we're starting to see some signs of that now. That does have implications on what our weather is going to be like uh, based on where this uh, greatest cooling is in the Pacific. It's not just, not just about how strong La Nina is or, you know, whether it's El Nino or La Nina. That has a play in it too, but where, where the coldest waters are also affects our pattern locally here. We've also talked about snow, pro pro snow cover propagation over the last several videos. 
and you can see this is not moving south here. This is, oops, I went too far. Uh, but you get the idea here. Everything's staying across Canada here. Uh, now, we looked at, if you look at the previous video and we, and we saw uh, where the snow cover was, it was not, uh, it, it was deeper than this. So it was a very, you know, we had some melting here, especially here on the southern uh, southern periphery. We had some melting here, so it's not as, a, as extensive as it was. And we had some of these, you know, pinks and, and purples that were further south here. Uh, but you see nothing. This there, of course, this is uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Uh, right here, here, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and, and Michigan. Nothing even showing here on the ground in those areas, which are typically snow-covered at this point in some of those areas so nothing there but i do think as we get uh as we get in the upcoming uh week to 10 days once we have this, this plunge coming in i'm going to talk about we're going to have more of an access like this and it's going to go off the map here where we're going to have uh you know good snow cover coming in here to southeastern canada and the eastern united states so this area will fill in uh quite a bit with snow over the next uh you know two to three weeks now here's our the reason it was like this. Why we just kept it up in Canada? Why hasn't it, hasn't it gone down? Hasn't hasn't it come down into the United States? And that's because we've been in a zonal pattern, which is just kind of this boring west to east do do do. You know, fair, there's they're just fast moving west to east pattern. So what that did is two different things with your very uh, short wavelengths here. Okay, so you ca what that did is just kept it uh, kept anything as far as cold transient. All right, so you had a you know quick cold shot and that was it. In and out, and the same thing with the warm shots. You had warm shots in and out. It was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, uh, but that, it also kept systems moving relatively fast west to east. So they're moisture starved. And that's why we had very little in the precip precipitation department. But it was just, you know, you'd have, you know, cold here, and then right in between for a day or two, you'd have warm, and you have cold, warm, cold, warm. So that's all it was. This is all zonal. That's all that is. Now, as we get out with time, though. Now, once this cold front comes through here on Wednesday that we've been talking about, here's what happens. Now you have amplification in the pattern. Okay, so now you're going to get some cold air, and you have a couple things that are going to be aiding that. All right, you have a polar vortex sitting right here. Okay, uh, you have a, a deep trough out here, and then a huge, huge ridge out here. Deep trough here. So there's your, there's your, there's your jet stream now. Again, huge ridge here causing a cross-polar flow and getting the cold air to bleed from the polar regions and even from Siberia, cross-polar. So it's coming all the way from Siberia in some cases and coming across the poles. It is going to moderate some coming, moving southeast. So this is not going to be brutal cold. This is not going to be like highs in the, in, a, in the 20s here. We're not talking about that yet. But what this does is gets the cold, colder than average temperatures and below normal temperatures that will allow for wintry events so that if we get some whitening on the ground here, and next time you get a shot like this, it's going to be more effective. Okay, uh, but this is a very good pattern here uh, for cold, not necessarily snow, not yet. I do think it changes though with time, and we get into uh, we do get into the uh, snow events. Uh, even going out, this is looking at uh, uh, Saturday of uh, uh, actually this is next Saturday. This is Saturday morning of next week. All right, and this is going out eight days beyond that, the max range of the model, and you're still seeing the same thing. Big cold here, polar vortex right here. Here's your ridge out in the west. No, nothing's really changed. So this is going to be a prolonged thing. This is not something that we've had before. We had these transient shots in and out, and that's it. This is going to be lasting in the Euro Weekly's minds. Uh, Euro Weekly think we, 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 the Euro Weeklies are suggesting this is going to last straight through the end of, of December, and perhaps at least the first week of January. So there's going to be a cold pattern, uh, and we should definitely, uh, from our projections anyway, once we get the actual pattern more amplified, we should start getting into uh, some more snow events, and a lot sooner than we've certainly, certainly than we've had over the last couple of years. If you remember, uh, last couple of December has been very, very mild, to the point where we were wearing shorts on Christmas. So it was very warm. We're not going to be dealing with that this year. Completely different. So it definitely will be cold. It's just a matter of... Uh, you know how much snow we're going to get in, get this month, and how much how much snow we can squeeze out of this pattern. We think that there's a good chance once we get to if you look at the the, wet, the header on our website. It says uh, that we project between the 11th and 18th that we'll have our first accumulating snowfall, our first measurable snowfall. Uh, some areas will get it before then, and again, we have a system that maybe next Saturday we'll be dealing with. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but I think that as far as for the majority of the area. 
uh, to get into its first accumulating snowfall of significance. I think that's going to occur somewhere between the 11th and 18th. Maybe if I had to narrow it down a little bit further, maybe 12th to 16th, somewhere in there. So watch for that. That's going to be toward the middle of the month. Here is your uh, temperature outlook for the 12th to 16th of December. And this is off of a long range outlook. Again, below average, not just slightly below, but below average, the 12th to 16th. And that's going to keep hanging around. Here's the 17th to the 21st. Okay, day 16 to 20. So this is not going anywhere. It's going to be cold uh, for a couple weeks here, it looks like. And maybe through the end of the month, maybe through both holidays coming up, maybe into the first week of January, if the Euro weeklies are correct. It's going to be pretty cold. Okay. Uh, we dealt with this before. This is not this is not unprecedented by any means. Okay. Now, one of the things that w we were talking about with the with the systems we're going to be dealing with here was one of the first one was this cold front on Wednesday, and uh, the models a couple of days ago were showing this rain here out ahead of it, which we all knew. Okay. Uh, but then ending is snow, and it was showing a actually a pretty decent amount of snow out, especially in the interior locations. Well, we kind of were like, well, no, I don't think so. It's probably just going to be. Probably going to change and it's going to end up just being a few snowflakes, wet snowflakes mixing at the end, maybe even changing to wet snowflakes at the very end before the precipitation shuts off. And lo and behold, that is what is going on. If you look at our systems here on Wednesday, you have a, the very tail end of the front once this moves through. Any residual moisture is hanging around here. If the cold air can catch up to it, which we think it will, okay? Uh, parts of eastern Pennsylvania and western New Jersey could get... Some at, least, at the very least, snowflakes mixing in, but maybe changing over to snow and you get a quick dusting somewhere. The ground's going to be wet though, so I don't wouldn't expect that either. But just if you do see, if you this is this is Wednesday morning, so if you're going to see something on on Wednesday morning and you you know getting up for work or leaving for work and you see some snowflakes flying for be for a very short period of time, okay, just don't get too excited. This is going to be a big deal. We are going to keep an eye on next Saturday though, because the GFS at least. Is suggesting that we might have a like a little, I don't want to call it a clipper, but it's something similar to that in terms of effects. We have a, a, an upper level low sitting over the Great Lakes, just kind of sitting and spinning. And you get like a piece of energy here that's rounding the base of this, like this. Okay. And you see that little L right here. Here's the low. <clears throat> so this, this little piece of energy is going to round the base of the trough and or, or, or excuse me around the base of the upper level low you just kind of spin around like this and we're going to get uh, some areas especially in the interior that'll have the opportunity for some snow showers and that would could give you like a you know a coating to an inch or two maybe three in some spots so we'll have to keep an eye on this this is not uh you know not something to, to fall asleep on and we'll be discussing this in the premium forum again next week if we have this uh, opportunity still presenting itself this is just the gfs pretty much showing this the european model was showing something uh, yesterday where it had a snow event, you know, further east, I wouldn't really expect that just yet. A lot of these, these models really have to have to uh, consolidate some things and some so many different pieces of energy to deal with here. Uh, they're having a hard time consolidating and reconciling what's going on. So I think we'll have a lot of solutions. We do have an opportunity for this clipper system here on the next Saturday. So keep in mind next Saturday and then the following Wednesday-ish, Wednesday, Thursday, middle of next week, middle of the following week, I'm sorry. That's when we're dealing with maybe the potential for something bigger. But uh, I don't want to show anything like that yet because that's kind of uh, getting a little ridiculous. But the reason I'm thinking that is because the, the Matajulian Oscillation, this is one of the reasons anyway, Matajulian Oscillation is going to be going through these warm phases, which is the uh, maritime continent. And that's where we are right now. Here's December 3rd. That's where we are right now. So that little dot is, that's where we are right now. It's going to go into phase six. Well, phase six is going to give us this cold in the eastern United States. Look, here's the eastern U.S. Here's all this cold coming into the eastern U.S., and warmth out here in the west that's what a phase six looks like and that's right here uh which is going to be right around here's the third fourth fifth six hey right when our cold front comes through and it lasts through about the 12th or 13th maybe well if you look at uh what that looks like uh that looks pretty similar okay that's what we're looking at that's a phase six look right there Oops, went the wrong image. That's a phase six look. So this is not surprising that, that that's where we're going, the pattern we're going to. Now, the difference is when you're in a phase six, this is a cold phase right here. This, when you go to phase seven, you keep going to phase seven, it's going to keep moving eastward. Phase seven is cold and stormy, not just cold. Same thing with phase eight and phase one. These are cold and stormy phases, not just cold. So once we get into, if it keeps this eastward prop, uh, propagation like it's showing, uh, we will have a better opportunity 
uh, for more stormy, uh, more amplified pattern and bigger storms, bigger, more consolidated energy storms instead of just these fast moving systems in and out. We're talking about the Manajulian oscillation, why that's important. Uh, this, if you're in the, uh, there, you have convection in the east, in the uh, Indian Ocean here, this is not a favorable area for us. This is a warm phase in winter. If it's out here in the maritime continent, which is this area, entire area right here, that is also not good for us. That is where we are right now. It's a milder look. It's why we're mild today. Okay, it's more in phase five. If you're in the Western Pacific, though, it gets cold because what this does is uh, it, it's a measure of the, the greatest convection in the in the uh, in these different areas. If the, if their greatest convection is right here, the heat transport is pointed poleward. You then have an effect on the ridge, ridges and troughs. Okay, and that'll affect what goes on downstream as far as these. Uh, you obviously we have a trough over area. We have an opportunity for cold and perhaps snow perhaps stormy the further east it goes toward the international date line right about here is about a phase seven look uh phase seven is a little bit more stormy okay so that's why i think uh, we're going to get into that uh, we're going to get into a stormier pattern and it's just going to be somewhere between that 11th 18th time frame again if i had to narrow it down a little further it's probably something like the 12th to the 16th somewhere in there but we're going to allow for an accumulating snowfall. And it's going to be cold this entire month, just like we said. So, you know, if it does snow, even if you don't get uh, several events, you have an opportunity for not just one, but maybe a couple before Christmas. But if you only have one, and it gives you six inches, and as the, the you know it's on the 18th of, of December, odds are you're still going to have six inches of snow, or some snow at least, on the ground at Christmas. So it will be a white Christmas if that were to occur. Uh, I don't want to jump the gun on that just yet and, and disappoint people down the line, but we're... Uh, talking about this for a while that we think that we will have a pretty good shot at a white Christmas and I don't want to generalize that for everywhere because again southeast of I-95 climatologically might not might not be the best time for you yet but you never know it certainly has happened before okay uh, we'll see we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks but I think this is uh, that second week of toward the second uh, end of the second week of December will start to produce uh, more than just just minor stuff or flurries or you know back end stuff like this, I think it's going to start producing something a little bit more decent uh, to the point where you need a shovel. Okay, and once those uh, once those things do start to occur, we're going to be discussing that in the premium form. If you have not joined the premium form or gotten the weather alerts yet, uh, you need to start uh, get, thinking about doing that now, just because we have a very little time before we're going to start doing the model analysis. We'll probably start this this week uh, for this system right here if this starts to produce. And this is next Saturday. So we're going to be talking about this week in the premium form. This is where we do the model analysis, the intense model analysis. Uh, it, is an, it is an exclusive in the form. We don't do that publicly. We do do snow maps publicly, but that's only when something's imminent and kind of last minute. Uh, but this is the leading up to uh, those storms discussions that we have. And it's fully interactive with, of course, with uh, with our team of meteorologists from Eastern PA Weather Authority in Weather, New Jersey. And the weather alerts will come right to your phone and tell you exactly when uh, you're going to get snow, how much you're going to get, when is it going to end, when is it going to change over to another precipitation type, if applicable. So these are all things that are come through our weather alerts, and it's done by a county by county by county basis, specific to the county, and you get these at least 24 hours uh, after each initial alert. So we'll probably give you a couple days notice of this, and we'll give you every 24 hours, we'll give you an update if something changed, even if it didn't change, we'll give you an update every 24 hours leading up to the event. And then real-time alerts during the event, if needed, if something's changing, we predict three to six, and hey, we're surprised you're getting six to ten. We're going to send you an alert so you know that's coming, okay? Or changes of timing, things like that. So get on this program. This is actually if you go below the video, click on the My Pocket Meteor. I'll just link. I'll take you right to that page. You get signed up for uh, either or, but you can package these together and get a discount. Uh, and uh, it's thirty percent off the uh, form if you add these together and bundle them together. Look at that all at the bottom of that page. Uh, again, below this video, click on the My Pocket Meteorologist link. It'll take you right to the sign-up page. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority Meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is this edition of Weather Weekly is for Sunday, December 3rd. Hope you join me again next week. Hopefully, we'll have a lot more things to talk about and it'll be a little bit busier heading in toward the middle of the month of December. Take care.